I am Todd Gannon and this is the SciArc Channel. I'm here tonight with Benjamin Bratton, professor in the Department of Visual Arts at UC San Diego and author of The Stack on Software and Sovereignty, recently released by the MIT Press. Ben, thanks for joining me today. I'm familiar with your work. Huh? We've spent a lot of time together here at yeah. SciArc, so maybe yeah. just to kind of get things going, tell us uh, what is The Stack, where does it come from, and where is it going? The Stack is both a model uh, and a mega machine, I suppose, in the Mumford sense, in, in a certain way. It's, it's what happens when planetary scale computation both de distorts and deforms the traditional Westphalian models of political geography and jurisdiction and produces new territories in its own image. Mm -hmm. The stack is the accidental megastructure that we have produced. The model is based on the software and hardware stacks, the OSI, TCIP stack of interlocking uh, modular layers in which you have specific technologies that are um, dedicated to specific tasks. Um, in the book, I use the scheme of a earth layer, cloud layer, city layer, address layer, interface layer, and user layer. Uh, and talk a bit about the history of, of, of these, how they interrelate with one another. And particularly, I guess what I'm interested in terms of this is a, as something that tries to link political philosophy and a, a more projective um, story about te technological present and technological future, um, is an interest in the role of the accident. Mm -hmm. and that this, this whole system itself was not planned and designed, and yet right. there it is. You know, we were talking about Paul Virilio a bit earlier. Virilio has this sort of axiomatic line that the invention of any new technology is also the invention of a new kind of new accident. accident yeah. And part of what I try to focus on with each of these layers is a little bit of attention to what kinds of accidents are they producing, right. um, with the notion that the invention of any new accident is also the invention of a new technology. There's a lot at stake for what, um, for this, this system that we're building, this 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 framework, how it is that it's organizing our politics, our cultures, our economics, um, and where we enter into it, and how it might be recomposable, is really what this book is about. Right. And one of the one of the things that uh, very early on in the book becomes clear is at stake, and is always in the title, is the continued validity of traditional Westphalian nation states mm -hmm. in. Uh, exacting sovereignty, um, in so that the, the stack becomes one of the accidents of the construction of this planetary computational stack mm. is that uh, it cannot help place significant pressure on existing modes of geopolitical governance sure. and at the same time begin to suggest or even insist upon new modes of governance. One of the key examples that we, that I refer to and come back to in the book is the ongoing conflict between Google and China. Mm -hmm. You recall in 2009, um, Google's license um, in China was up for renewal and for various machinations and other reasons. They did the largest internet company in the world decided to pull out from the largest internet market in the right. world. And yet, Android is the most popular operating system in China. There's all kinds of things. There's, in a way, Google is still there. Mm -hmm. And so what we see in, in ways is, is not just two kinds of one a technology, one a state, but it, in many ways, two different models for how a um, how a political geography might be uh, organized and how it might speak, how it might uh, claim an organized space in its own image. Two layers, if you like, grinding against each other in this right. way, uh, and it's the grinding of these two sort of these two kinds of um, these two sorts of logics that is really where I see the the future of sovereignty kind of emerging from. Not in the resolution of them into some kind of uh, common plane, but, right. but the, it's the conflicts. I, I should say though that um, the story that I try to tell in the book is not one of is not one only of states somehow virtualizing into right. the cloud as those states go away or as though borders go away. I think quite the opposite. I think what we see is not that borders are ver are disappearing; they're multiplying exponentially. Right. It's borders inside of borders inside of borders. It's one system nested inside another system, nested inside another system some of which are correspondent to one another, some of which don't even know the other one even exists. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that condition of these sort of multiple totalities, right. all interlocking and, and claiming the same space, the same person, the same site. This I try to take as not just an accumulation of strange exceptions, but as a kind of new normal. Right. And what does it mean to start from there? And including in that is the fact that not just are cloud platforms taking on roles that traditionally have been held by 
roles and functions that have traditionally been performed by nation states. Nation states themselves are also mm -hmm. evolving into cloud platforms, right. as we see from the, you know from the Snowden revelations or mm -hmm. uh, you know China's interest in the sort of thing as well. And so. It has to do with also the evolution of those more traditional modern forms of sovereignty as well. Sure. They don't go away. And so there, I guess there's a couple of trajectories that we could take out of there, and I'd like to touch on both of them in the time that we have. Uh, the first one has to do with maybe just clarifying, um, say, a more traditional understanding of sovereignty. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the sources that you draw on is Giorgio Agamben's suggestion, I guess, that, that the uh, sovereignty is determined not by who runs the law in its normal state or who oversees the law in its normal state, but which powers are able to exert decision-making status over exceptions. Yeah. Right. So when we look at this in the kind of virtual, um, in the virtualization of certain things, we see accidents producing new kinds of exceptions that seem to evade existing legal structures, existing notions of sovereignty. Right. At the same time, and this is the other trajectory that we could come out of, the virtualization of uh, seemingly stable things is deeply and fundamentally material. One of the most unfortunate sort of commonsensical cliches of the early years of, of uh, planetary scale computation, I suppose, is the notion that there's some correspondence between the analog and the physical and of course between the computation, the digital and right. the virtual. Computation is just as physical as any other analog system. The analog systems can be just as virtual. It, there, what the emphasis is made over and over again, <clears throat> that the form of comp that the computational systems that we're talking about are, 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 are physical, are heavy, are energy intensive, or right. carbon intensive, that, they're, that, they, that in, even in the sense to which they might link locations, at a distance, might mm -hmm. shuttle information back and forth in such a way that the presence of senders and receivers may act at a distance. Uh -huh. It's based upon it's just a, a very heavy kind of structure. In terms of the exception, Agamben is drawing on the work of, in, in, in his the theory of the exceptions, on the work of Carl Schmitt. And I use Schmitt in a somewhat different way in the book, um, right. particularly Schmitt's notion of the nomos. Um, and the nomos is, very quickly, sort of the first logic for how it is the Earth might be subdivided politically. Mm -hmm. what the, that drawing of the line on the ground that subdivides ours from theirs, inside right. from out. And long story short, one of the things that Agamben draws on from this is, is that the sovereignty is, is in many ways a, a result, of, is, is he who has the capacity to draw this line and to determine when and where it would make those subdivisions. Right. One of the things that we're seeing though um, is that in this, it, as those borders become multiplied, exponentially multiplied, nested inside one another, mm -hmm. that it's not just about a, a kind of flat plane. You imagine that Montana landscape right. with drawn lines in it and sort of a clear rectilinear mm -hmm. sort of horizontal plane and like clearly there's the line. But when you have these multiple geographies all nested inside one a, another, a whether, one's, whether one line is actually governing it an inside or an outside right. for one system or another system, in a way, that becomes the, the real seat of sovereignty. Not right. just to draw the line, but to decide whether that line is keeping something in or keeping, or keeping something, something out. out. And increasingly, in many ways, we, um, we automate those decisions. Right. Part of the, the role of the agency of algorithms at the level of the city mm -hmm. is to automate those gateways and interfaces that might right. move people in and out in one way or another. And this is part of the, this is one of the ways in which software has taken a seat right. of sovereignty. One of the kind of fascinating things for me about this is, is, is that for you that one job that the book seems to have to do or that you take on in the book is to lay out that history. So that kind of history of geopolitics mm -hmm. and the kind of ideological implications of so sovereignty. Mm -hmm. The history of computation and the way that it kind of bootstraps up through a series of accidents into this thing we now have named the stack and also a kind of projective, uh, as you call it, a design brief. That given this situation, our job is not simply to, like, like we need to understand where it came from, uh, but almost in the way that Rainer Banham defined the job of the historian, that our, the historian's job is also, given the data points that we've assembled out of the past, to project possibilities into the future. I guess to a certain degree it has to do with my own disciplinary background and the kinds of way, my own movement between social science and architecture and, and design and art in and, and other places. And so all, all of these come to bear in one way or another on this. Part of the uh, 
part of the argument that, that, that it's important to also hold in mind about the way stacks function is that they're designed to be replaced. Right. Stack, the way the built into the stack architecture and the way the ways in which stack architecture would be deployed is you can't know in advance what what some future technology may come about that right. would be able to solve one of these different layers better. And so the system has to be designed with the presumption that everything that might go in there now may be replaced. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a Theseus paradox right. of everything that can be replaced and yet it holds the same shell in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So the important thing to keep, keep in mind, especially when constructing something like a theory of totality, yeah. is that this isn't fixed, this isn't set. It isn't a mega structure in the sense of like something that is a monolith that's set in stone for all time and uh -huh. sort of thing as well. Everything that's here is in the process of being replaced with something else. And so the futures, uh, the future possibilities, the accidents, the future technologies that might constitute each of these, it, the emergence or appearance of these is in a way built into the machine in, in the first place. Right. And so to do an analysis of the machine, to do an analysis of what it's doing, to understand what it's doing, mm -hmm. what it's doing is producing these futures. Right. And so to talk about one, you kind of have to talk about the other. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, I do talk about the book explicitly as a kind of design brief. Right. Like It's like, oh, here is a framework by which these, these systems are interoperating at these different scales. Mm -hmm. Here are some um, multiple futures, scenarios, if you like, about ways in which these might, uh, these might develop. With the, with the um, I hope, a clear call that uh, to develop them and develop them well is of real significance. This is literally a matter of life and death in many, in many cases. Right. Uh, and that the job of design as a whole Mm -hmm. um, is to intervene in these with a bit more uh, fearlessness, perhaps. All right, well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. So, Ben, thank you very much for uh, My taking the time, and I look forward to keeping the conversation going. And thank you for joining us at the SIRC channel. <laughs>